Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, good evening. Hello, hello, everyone. It's uh, great to be here again. Uh, if uh, you can be so kind and, you know, put there that you can hear us and see us, that would be, you know, great. And maybe everyone's a little sleepy today because it's Monday. Normally we're here on Tuesdays, but travel schedules get a little wild. Jan's teaching, I'm teaching, and we want to get you content as much as we possibly can, even if it's slightly off schedule. Ah, okay. So we have a we have a YouTube already. I will check uh, LinkedIn on my phone. Great. And I know last time we had some challenges with LinkedIn. What I can tell you is we had some folks behind the scenes that were so kind, help us to report it through to LinkedIn and get some troubleshooting done. So I, I, I was since that time, I was already twice doing, you know, the same thing in Czech language and it was working already. So yeah. Okay. And we've got Antonin here from LinkedIn saying, hey, it's working tonight. We've done something right. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Okay. Ivana, Antonin is here. Hello, yeah. Dave. Okay. Here. Okay. So I think uh, Dave Gibson uh, is here. Okay. So I think we are ready. If somebody from Facebook can ping us also that Facebook is on, I can check also Facebook on my. Yeah. And, and maybe while you're checking Facebook, I'll start off by yeah, saying. Facebook is there, definitely. Ah, okay. Perfect. Yeah. Because, we, you know, this is such a hot topic for people. Uh, we make mistakes. I know it's like taboo Indeed. to admit you make mistakes. But Jan and I are very good about making mistakes. <laughs> or at least talking making, about our making, mistakes. Making, you should say making new mistakes, right? Ah, because so making the same mistake all the time, it's stupidity. It's not <laughs> smart. <laughs> but this is exactly the kind of conversation we want to have tonight yeah. because people think all mistakes are bad. And we're going to break that mess wide open we love mistakes when you're learning right and uh and there's also a really great way to own up to your mistakes can take accountability some things are going to be a failure and we have to accept that and move on it doesn't always mean that you're going to look bad not your deepest darkest fears are going to come true so we're going to spend this whole evening tonight talking about giving you tips and tricks as always, if you want to put something into the chat box, if you have a specific situation, a specific question you want to ask us while we're live, we're happy to coach you through your real situations, your real faux pas or mistake, or you don't know how to handle something. <laughs> exactly. All right. So let me, you know, start, do short, you know, kick off what, what we know, what yeah. science knows about, you know, making mistakes and why we are somehow you know demonizing our mistakes okay so what we know from people like andrew huberman one of the best you know neuroscientists in the world, uh, if you make you know some mistake your brain will generate a peak of neuroadrenaline that's adrenaline created in your brain stress hormone and basically that peak means for you this is really important you should pay attention to that you know not to repeat the same mistake but unfortunately, very often, as Lisa rightly said, we, we try to deny our mistake. Hey, it's not my mistake. It's, it's them, you know. It's us and them usually, right? So it's, it's very tough for us to accept our own mistakes for us, but also in front of the other people. Why is that? Because there is something in psychology they call FOPO, fear of other people's opinion. We are fearful. If we will admit our own mistakes, that you know other people will go after us, right? Because in the history, imagine when people were like hunting and they were in the same tribe, and one gentleman or lady would make you know some mistake, and the chief of that tribe would say, "You are no more part of our group. Go out." out. <laughs> that would mean you know you are dead, basically. Yeah, right. That's the decision on your death, and that's why. We have deeply in our subconsciousness program that if we are making mistake, our life can be in danger, which is stupid. I mean, it can be in some circumstances, but not automatically. So that's why we are like demonizing those mistakes. When we are born, okay, kids are making a lot of mistakes. That's the way they learn, basically. That there is some attempt and they, they learn, they do like a couple of, you know, steps and they do more steps and so on. If the kids would behave like many adults, you know, we would never walk. We would maybe crawl, you know, but not we would not be walkers, you know, right? No way. 
kids are like learning all the time, making mistakes. Maybe they are crying a little bit, but then they go and they go and they go. And they are they are like never giving up. Okay. But then what is happening? Kids are getting compared to the other kids. Okay. In the school, at home, it's always, hey, it's great that you are in majority of the subject, you are number one. But how about Czech or English language? You are number two. Joe mm -hmm. and I are better than you. Okay. And then you are afraid what your parents would say because you love your parents because that's your source of your information. Whoever was, you know, like uh, making you your upbringing, you know, right? So you are compared. And that's why you, you are kind of, hey, I hesitant to make mistakes. And then in the school, you're getting, you know, ratings in your country, A, B, C, whatever, up to the F. In my country, one is the best, five is the worst. By the way, five means fail also, the same like in like in United yeah. States, right? In some smart schools, they don't call, if you like are not successful in the exam, they don't call it failed, but they call it not yet. Not mm -hmm. yet, not yet for our brain. It's very different from fail. Not yet means, hey, I made some effort. I'm not there yet. Very often today, Yiri Lehetska was playing. He won in the first you know, round. Uh, on, on Wednesday, I will be with him in, in Vienna. There is a uh, ATP fi uh, 500. When he's losing and he's playing well, I'm giving him feedback. Hey, you played very well. This is the way we are moving step by step to the top 10. But we are not there yet. We need to make, you know, more efforts, right? And that's absolutely, yes. you know, fine. You need to encourage people. But if you will t t tell them, hey, you fail, you know, right? Even though you you may, you know, uh, study very hard. It's, for me, it's not good. I think you should, we should give people feedback. We should give uh, people assessment. But it should be like written assessment, kind of what that child or the adult should continue what to stop, what to start. This is it. It's all that, like three basic philosophical questions. Okay, and that goes like that. That's why, you know, we are, we are 20, 25 years on and we go to the world. We are absolutely afraid to make, you know, mistakes. That's why we are sending tons of the emails, ceasing half of the company, just in case, just in case, okay? So that's reality. I tell you how the richest editor at that time richest person and one of the most successful person in the world at that time bill gates how he was treating our mistakes in microsoft he was always telling me jan if you don't know whether you should do it or not just do it you can always ask for forgiveness you know right and your boss now we talk about smart boss smart boss they, he or she will forgive you you know smart mistakes because if you try out of your comfort zone chances are that you know you will not be successful but you will learn and you will move very often in organizations we have sharing best practices department or whatever which is great because success is leaving indeed clues okay well we don't have the worst practices you know department and we should have it definitely because people are learning mostly from mistakes you know your brain works like we go after the last, you know, negative experience. That's the most important thing for the brain because brain wants you to survive, first of all, and then everything else, okay? Because mm -hmm. I mean, 10 times faster than logical part of the brain. So this is it. That's, that's where I think humankind is, you know, relative to the mistakes. And now it's even worse because, you know, uh, to me, Social networks, it's like multiplication effect of that, you know, like bullshitting. If I will not have, you know, this one, or if I will make this mistake, or if I will, you know, express some opinion, maybe I'm wrong. So I will rather not, this, uh, you know, express any opinion, you know. Right? Yes. And, and that's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, people, I, I call them, you know, like call majority, they, they you know. They are majority, but they are not heard because, and then, you know, the, on the other hand, uh, social media are making stupidity global. You know, in the past, when somebody was stupid, it was known only, you know, like internal circle, if you will. Today, it's a global thing. Okay. And those, you know, societies in the past, which celebrated stupidity, 
man, that meant basically the end of the civil that civilization, like you know, uh, uh, Rome Empire. It was they were really like celebrating stupid, you know, examples, stupid, uh, you know, things, right? So I, I think this is it. That's that's dangerous, and it's like relative to the mystic stupid people. They are not afraid. They are making stupid mistakes. Those are not smart mistakes. Yeah, they don't even know. They are, they are advertising them and they are making them global and making them money. You know, right? <laughs> social networks are full of bizarre things. You know, right? It's really bit sometimes very bizarre. I mean, I, I think people should enjoy it. That's for sure. You know, right? But yeah, this is it. And if you want to change it, you know, right? We need to encourage much more growth mindset. And with that, I'll hand over to Lisa yes. to talk a little bit about growth yes. mindset and the stuff. And then we will continue. I mean, yeah, and you dropped so many like golden nuggets in there. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Before I go into growth mindset, I just do want to pick up on this last thing with social media. You touched on it a bit with cancel culture. And this is part of why people are afraid to express opinions. If they express the wrong one, if it's not far enough to the left or far enough to the right or whatever, people will literally attack you, go after you. And there are people who end up resigning from their jobs or getting you know, voted out of office for expressing opinions that are mistakes. And so I understand when we talk about why we have fear in the brain and why we're so nervous to make these mistakes and have people see them, there are real consequences. This is not all just made up in your head and we can say, hey, no problem, do whatever you want and there will be no consequence. So of course, as we're talking about fear and risks and making mistakes, we're still gonna be talking about you know making those smart mistakes. <laughs> And that's where growth mindset comes in because mistakes that you repeat over and over, you never learn from them. You just keep doing them. Like um, I can admit my own mistakes for a variety of reasons. I sometimes have to write my own invoices for my company sometimes. I can tell you half the time I make a mistake on it. I address it to the wrong person. I put the wrong date on it. I, I just, I'm not a detail oriented person. This is one of those things that I can tell you is a stupid mistake. <laughs> this is why I outsource most of it most of the time. But the right kind of mistakes, we don't want to just celebrate, you know, some entrepreneurs, there's actually a startup where they used to give people a bottle of champagne. Every time they made a mistake, they were like, great job. They took growth mindset to the extreme because yep. they didn't account for it being smart mistakes. So every dumb mistake you made, they were like, here's a bottle of champagne. We want those mistakes that are helping us to learn and to grow. Listen, every skill set you have in five years, maybe half of it's going to be irrelevant. Exactly. So we need to forever keep learning, keep growing, keep developing, come up with a new strategy at work, learn a new skill. How are you inputting into chat GPT and starting to use AI? You're going to make mistakes. It's just like, as Jan said, I love this because I say this to my kids too. You, the first time you took a step, what do you think? You got up and ran a, a marathon? You fell over. Absolutely. And that was normal. And everybody still applauded because you took the first step and you tried. Same. You have to be willing, no matter if you are senior leadership, if you are CEO, and people think, oh, once I'm at this level, I'm supposed to be the know-it-all. I'm supposed to be the expert who knows everything. No, you're not. You're supposed to role model this kind of uh, learning. Jeff Bezos will tell you, I've lost billions in innovations that ended up not working out. It doesn't feel good. He'll tell you that. It doesn't feel good. I'm not happy that I lost billions. But he also says it's irrelevant. It's the cost of doing business to innovate, to be successful, mm -hmm. to be on top. That's just the cost of business. So don't think about mistakes as, oh, it means that it's a personal failure on mine. It's just the cost of you continuously learning and growing. And very important for me that people know, because Jan and I work with the top, top, top successful people in the world. What makes them different? Some of them, okay, if you're Bill Gates and you have 160 plus IQ and you're a genius, fine, that helps. For the rest of us who are not geniuses, the thing that makes us very successful is not because we were so smart and we were so perfect and we got everything right all the time. What Jan and I know about successful leaders is the people who are successful are the people who fail, learn, keep going, fail, learn, and keep Absolutely. going. 
You learn faster. You learn more. You master more things. You don't let the fear of a mistake stop you. This is what success is. Although it feels counterintuitive, as Jan said, you want to protect yourself. You don't want to make that mistake. You want it to be perfect. But in the end, by, quote, protecting yourself, in the short term, you feel protected. In the long term, you're actually hurting yourself. Because first of all, you have to keep faking that you know stuff that you don't know. Second of all, other people are going to move past you because you never got the knowledge. You never learned how to do it, how to get the experience, how to move fast and, and learn. So in the short term, what feels like protection is actually in the long term, you're sabotaging your career, your happiness, your mental health. Because if you sit there going, oh, everyone else is smarter than me. Everyone else is smarter than me. Everyone else is smarter than me. And you learn nothing at some point, the others are smarter than you. <laughs> Not because you're stupid, but because you were too afraid to learn with them. So this for us is very important that making mistakes, this mindset shift around these good mistakes are actually the core of my success. I don't need to run from them. I need to run towards them. And I can show you my first chat GPT questions, right? It's like, Okay, I try this. Ooh, that did not quite get me what I want. What if I reword it like this? Okay, let me go and Google what prompt should I put into ChatGPT if I do this? And that's how I got better and better. Now I use ChatGPT to write a whole bunch of stuff for me. It, it writes my articles for me for Forbes and I can use it very quickly. But if I just said, oh, I don't know how to use it. Think about all of the stuff I'd be missing out on, all of the time and efficiency and great information that I can get because I took the chance to take a couple of risks. And, you know, relative to mistakes, there are like two different, you know, positions you, you can have. You can be perfectionist. So perfectionists are all or nothing. Okay. You are like, you know, number one. And if you are number two, you are already a loser, right? In your mind. Okay. And if you make mistakes, you are not able to accept it. And very often you are like giving up because if you are a perfectionist, what your brain is doing, there's a very important hormone relative to your you know, motivation. And that's dopamine. Dopamine is doing this. Like whenever you are successful, dopamine goes up if you, have, you are a perfectionist. But then dopamine goes back to the baseline, up baseline, up baseline, which is okay, provided that you are making no mistakes but once you go out of your comfort zone you will for sure make some mistakes and then dopamine line is dropping down and then you are like giving up maybe you are saying hey i'm no more you know working for this company it's you know too tough for me i'm no more studying this university it's you know too tough for me doing that sport whatever okay so that's perfectionism not good okay perfectionism people are like afraid to make you know mistakes afraid to learn from mistakes on the other hand, excellence means that you are able to be better version of yourself every day, whatever is happening. Some days are, you know, more successful than the other days, but you are learning as you go. And then dopamine is not driving those peaks, but dopamine baseline is going step by step up. This is the reason why people who really love what they do, they are really, you know, doing that you know, excellence, uh, which means like be better version of yourself, like every day. I my, my slogan was always be more of who you are. I have even those, you know, t-shirts, which is exactly because you have some genes and you can build on those genes are talents and you can build on those, you know, talents and really be yourself. All other, other roles are taken anyway, you know, right? So yeah, exactly. <laughs> we are unique unless we will clone, you know, people. So, and, and the first uh, perfectionism is called fixed mindset, that you are fixed, you know, to be successful or everything else, it's unacceptable. And the other, you know, mindset, when you, pay, you have a, that, that excellence every day, a better version of yourself, it's called growth mindset because you grow as you go. And you know what? Kids are born with a growth mindset. They are very curious. They, they're learning. My friend, you know, Bruce Lipton, who is very important and very known, you know, uh, a scientist in epigenetics, he is basically saying that kids are in the flow. In the flow, you're learning the best. You are very creative and you are very productive. 70% of the time, till six years old, kids are in the flow. That's why they are learning so much. Once they go to the school, school is... Lisa mentioned great example, AI, okay? 
in AI, there are two things you really need to manage. You you need to be able to basically form the issue, form the problem, you know, really define what is the problem and ask right questions, okay? And this is what school is. School is teaching you solutions and answers. This is solution, this is solution. But this is not about innovation, you know, right? That's why if, if the kids are really small, like six years old, 98% of the kids are showing high creativity. When we are 25 years old, it's only 2%. Because school school models are like from 18th you know, century at the best, sometimes from 17th century. No kidding, you know, right? And, and the problem is that we are in the 21st century and we have like artificial intelligence or, you know, technology. And we are not using that technology to change that education, you know, model because it's it's based on memorizing. It's not based on if you want to teach properly, you need to teach the whole context, you know, right? How many of you still on the on the call still remember the Mendeleev, you know, table of the, you know, from uh, uh, chemistry? OK, how many of yeah. you? Probably nobody, unless we have some, you know, specialist in, in chemistry. Okay, how yeah. many of you still remember, you know, Cinderella tale? Everybody. Yeah. Okay. Because because there is a story, there is a context, and this is it. That's the way. Very before, you know, I I don't know print and whatever, you know, we were able to write. We were like handing over from one generation to the other all necessary information through the stories. Exactly. That's why our brain likes stories, you know, right? Yes. This, this is it. And that's, I, I think that's how, how we need to educate uh, people, right? So basically, back to that, kids are born with the growth mindset. But step by step, we are putting them to the fixed mindset. Because if we are saying, okay, in our family, only A's are available, available only one, you know, in my country, right? You know, come on, you know, this is fixed mindset, big time, right? And then, obviously, the, the, the question is how you can move back from the fixed mindset to the growth mindset. And, and I think it has to do, you need to be able to accept in your life what happened to you. Those are mistakes, right, usually. Because otherwise, you, you will suffer. The issue why people suffer in their life is that they are not able to accept what happened to them, you know, right? What, what happened to them? This is it, right? Accepting and forgiving yourself for these mistakes is going to have to come later because we have to have a long talk about this because people get afraid to make mistakes, as you said, because you build up mistakes and then the fear builds inside of you. Oh, I remember how that felt when I did that. Oh, I don't want to have that feeling again where the boss gives me that look. Oh, I don't want to get called into you know this meeting and have everyone yell at me. So I'm just going to say nothing. And here is the easy to use tool where you can learn both from the successes and failures, you know, right? You basically can remind yourself every day what was going well because and how it was going well because every success leaves clues, okay? Remind. Second R means repair what was not going well. You can like learn from those mistakes what you should do differently next time you know right so remind good thing repair what was not going well and imagine how you will do it in the future based on what you learn both on the positive and negative side and this is the way how you move this is by the way how kids start to walk you know right because they brain they brain is always comparing two set of the data okay am i walking or am i falling down you know right <laughs> What, what, what is happening around them? And they are comparing with that experience and it goes like that, you know, right? It goes yes. like, you know, it's feedback all the time, all the time, getting information all the time. And suddenly they are able to take like 10 steps, you know, and then they start to walk. You know, right? And I have to add something here before we go to some of the comments. This is so important to have time to reflect and to have feedback in the modern times, especially at work. What we're told is mental strength, resilience. Don't let the past hold you down. Move forward. You're fine. Keep going. Keep going, which is good. That's one tool you want to move forward. You want to focus on the next ball, right? You don't want to be Roger Federer or focus on, oh, I made a mistake. But please, so many people misunderstand. Mental strength is a short-term tool to move you forward in a moment. Absolutely. And then afterwards, you have to have this reflection process. You can't just say, I'm fine. It's fine. I don't care that because it sits. 
somewhere in here. Your body does not yeah. forget that you felt ashamed or embarrassed about it. So I love what Jan said. I encourage people in the mornings to have a journal. You can do 10 minutes. Don't make it a huge deal and just let out whatever you need to, whatever's flowing through your mind, whatever kind of keeps you up at night, do it in the morning though, and let it all out. If you need to, in that pro time process, oh, I made that mistake and it didn't feel good. And now I'm worried about what this person's saying and so and so. Give yourself the time to work through it and to let it out. Do not keep it stuffed in here. You need the feedback and the learning and the forward movement, but not saying, I'm fine, it's fine, I'll just be harder. You have to actually work through what you're going through. Exactly. Wojciech is uh, writing here. My son Wojciech started to walk two days ago. Congratulations. That's so cute. By the way, by the way, there is with walking, there is another thing which they figure out that if and then that that that's applicable also for adults. If you will make at least four steps ahead, your stress level goes down by 40%. By 40%, because in our brain, like moving forward means like, hey, I made a decision and I go and I will do something. Okay. Yesterday, my, you know, uh, fencer, uh, Alex Shupenich, he was uh, third, you know, at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. He won tournament, big tournament in Zagreb, in Croatia. But in the final, he was losing, uh, you know, fencing is up to the 15 points. In the final, he was losing to the Polish guy 14 to 10. So there oh. were four match balls for the Polish guy. And he still won. And I asked him and he said, well, I basically accepted what happened. Then I made probably some mistakes. And I really went like one by one by one, you know, right? And I was able, you know, I was careful. He was saying I was aggressive. But I was absolutely in the present moment, you know, right? Yes. Because sometimes I'm hearing from the athletes, I cannot be aggressive on, at the same point concentrated. I said, you can, you know, right? You can. It is, it is basically you are in the present moment, but you can still push, you know, provided that you are really in the present moment and you don't judge yourself. Because if Alex would judge, would say, oh, 14, 10, this is, you know, done deal, whatever. How should I do that? No. He was like mm -hmm. getting back to the present moment and going one by one. And this is what this is what happened. And that's the same in your life. You know, you you never know after many mistakes, there is probably some success behind the corner. The problem is that majority of the people will give up on the way. You know, yes. right? I very rarely in my life did something right for the first, like on the first. <laughs> never, you know, never. I, I, and I tell you why, because I was always challenging my comfort zone. Okay. This is it. This is what you, you said about the successful view. I think I was quite successful in, in my career. And I was glad I had a great people around me, whatever. But we were always like trying to challenge ourselves and to basically attack comfort zone. This is where the growth yes. is, you know, uh, uh, sitting. And uh, obviously, if you are out of the comfort zone, chances are that you will make some mistake. This is it. Kids are out of the comfort zone when they are like crawling and then suddenly they figure out, hey, there is something better than crawling, maybe. I can, you know, <laughs> By the way, do you know how, how it works? Because the kids, we have so-called mirror neurons. So we are mirroring what's going around us. It's it's also applicable for the adults, but the kids' mirror neurons are really strong. So they are able to reflect everything, what's going around them. And they see, hey, the, the adults are walking. That's not bad. You know, I should die. And oh, they go, yeah. Obviously, they need to have a bodyguard sometimes uh -huh. you know, around them, especially uh -huh. like inside, you know. But and, and the other thing is, Kids are failing down in a very smart way, I realize. You know, very, very rarely they would get some uh, injury. Very yeah. rarely. Okay. Yeah. Very rarely. Because they know how to, it's from the nature, you know. Right? Yes. It's, it's from the nature. Yes. We can learn in, in general. This is my recommendation. You know, try to watch the and follow the kids, especially small kids, what they are doing, how they are doing, how they are asking their the questions, because that's the mother nature, basically. And we can learn so much, you know, from the mother nature. Our lives are maybe 100 years, you know, long, whatever. I don't know how, you know, 
our lives will be long. But Mother Nature is here, you know, since whatever, you know, big big bank or whatever. Yeah, yeah, just a couple of billion, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to make sure we get to Wojciech's earlier yeah. question he had here. How to avoid that we lose trust when a mistake has happened? And of course, this depends on what the mistake is. But for me, this is the perfect time that I would share with you. First of all, be the one who admits the mistake. Don't wait until you get caught. Because if you wait until you get caught, trust is already a little bit lost. If you're proactive and going, I got to tell you something. I've got to raise my hand and let you know. And then I'm going to tell you this. This is super cool. Very few people worry about that, uh, know about this. There is something, there's a, there's a famous uh, uh, team who wrote about the five love languages. Maybe you know this, maybe you've done it for your spouse, you know, your spouse like gifts instead of whatever, uh, acts of service. Yep. But that same team wrote the five apology languages. <laughs> and they figured out different people want to hear different oh, sure. things from an apology and they have preferences. And in fact, in these apology languages, there are five of them. I'm going to read them out to you so that you know. First, you actually say you're sorry. I am sorry that I made yeah. that mistake. You accept that responsibility. You own it. Yeah. I'm, I did this. I get that I was responsible for this happening. You make a plan to change. This is important. So next time I, I'm going to do this differently or I've learned from it because you're not going to repeat your bad mistakes, right? Then you're going to have the stop and think where you reflect. It's not that you have excuses, but you go, you know, I've really thought about it. The reason that I did that was probably because I was you know, in this mindset or this was happening, or I was nervous about this so that you at least give a context or an explanation and then show that you care, ask for forgiveness. You're like, I, I, you know, it, I, I understand that I made this mistake. I'm sorry. Here's what happened. Here's why. Here's what I'm going to do differently from now on. Would you forgive me? Actually asking that a lot of times people go, yeah, and then it's done. And so when you start to have dialogue around the mistake, when you own the mistake proactively, when you don't say, oh, my God, I'm bad, I'm stupid, I'm so wrong, I'm not, don't beat yourself up, still hold some power in that conversation and be in conversation with the other person. What can I do differently? What do you need differently? What should it look like differently next time? And this is whether you've pissed someone off with an email, whether it's your partner, whether you've made a bad strategic mistake, it's all the same. Absolutely. Talk to people. How can I repair this? How can we go forward? I take a full ownership. And now will you forgive me for that so we can close it out and move on? That's the best way that you can explain to people. It was a learning mistake. Won't happen again. Trust can still be there. What, what happened when you will, you know, admit your own mistake and create and apologize and create some, you know, plan and you do it ob obviously publicly. What will happen? The other people will start to be also open and yes. they will start to admit your own mistakes. And this is the, especially if you are a boss and you will drive such behavior, you know, that you are public about your mistakes, your people will be public. And this is the way you will create learning organization. You will learn from everything, successes, failures, whatever. We moving on, moving on, moving on. Now, the other, the other tip, how you can, you know, encourage such behavior, Lisa suggested. If you provide, you know, feedback to somebody, you should go and basically, if, if that, you know, project was not successful, there was still probably some part of that project successful. So you should start with like praising that person to say, hey, this part of the project was really good. Thank you very much. It was good. That's when the serotonin is released yeah. and that other person will feel, hey, this is, you know, a good start. Then you can go and provide, you know, the critical feedback, right? The, 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 that, the, this is it, you know, right? Like corrective uh, uh, feedback, basically, right? But what is important, don't criticize the person because he or his amygdala would jump after you immediately and would be defensive, exactly. Criticize the process, criticize the action, okay? And say, hey, this should be done differently, like that. 
That's the second part. That's that's the kind of the failure, you know, feedback. And the third part is express, you know, trust in that person. All relationships are based on the trust. Say we still trust you. You you are a very good guy in the past. You did a great job. And if that will be done, you know, differently uh, again, it will be you know great. And that's about oxytocin, which is the uh, you know hormone for the for the trust. So that yeah. person that person will leave your office, uh, you know, and will understand what was done well, where he or she needs to improve, but they'll still be inspired to continue, you know, the, the work. Right. This is this is called sometimes sandwich feedback that, you know, very often because, you know, you, when you are like as a boss, you are pissed off and your amygdala is, you know, uh, up and running. You know, you go, ah, this is terrible. You should never do it. You repeat the same mistake all the time and you are very tough. And that person will start to be very defensive. And obviously, guess what? That person will be very afraid to make any other mistake. And you need to have risk takers. You need to have a people who can, you know, work independently, stuff like that. Otherwise, you know, if you need to decide on everything, that's not going to work simply. Yeah. Yes. And also important to add here, maybe it's somewhat related, which like maybe not. But I think it's very important when Jan was talking about kids and how they're so creative and so open and then over time they lose it, part of it is schooling, part of it is, you know, culture and expectations. And part of it is just as their brain develops, they develop embarrassment. Small, small children don't have this concept of, oh my God, are people laughing at me if I fall over? Exactly. They don't care, right? They don't have popo, fear of other people's opinions. And so sometimes we're so nervous about being embarrassed that we act in like an embarrassing way or we see our mistakes as embarrassing. And um, as Jan said, with mirror neurons, we pick up other people's energies, what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. So if the mistake isn't that big or it was a learning mistake or it's something you can just kind of brush by, acknowledge it. I'm not saying sweep it under the rug and hide it and avoid it. But don't be like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's never going to happen. Okay, this is what happened. This is what we're doing. And we move forward. Still show up with quite a bit of belief in yourself. Because when you show up, oh, I'm not sure I made a mistake. This is that. That tells other people, oh, but she doesn't trust herself. Or he doesn't trust himself. Maybe I shouldn't trust. And so if part of the thing you want to do is continue to instill in people, they can be confident in your decision making, they can be confident in trusting you to do this again, you need to show up like I trust in myself. And that confidence will help them to feel, okay, they've got it, they've learned, they're, they're moving on with it. Yeah, maybe what we, what we can do, you know, kind of, if everybody or at least whoever wants to share, you know, some mistakes you you guys did and i will start with you know my it was one of the best you know years i've got in you know microsoft there was a great presentation of my region you know and then uh, i was uh, you know supposed to deliver presentation on how i was the second day and i was supposed to deliver presentation on how microsoft should handle emerging markets places like eastern europe latin america southeast asia break brazil russia india china all of those places right and i think that presentation was prepared quite well the one thing which i underestimated personally we prepared something which was very revolutionary and we didn't test you know microsoft leadership team what will be the reaction okay mm. and you know what it, it's about the ego you know those those guys everybody got a, i've got a huge ego at that time my ego now is a little bit you know more under the control but at that time i got a big ego and and basically they were pissed off because we didn't ask them you know before we we presented that revolutionary approach and we didn't have a support from them right so that, that was a stupid and basically they were shooting in us like a hell, you know, and that was mm. not good. So that was, it was not disaster, but it was not good. But what was good? Again, I said, OK, I appreciate that. We should, you know, consult you first. But listen, now there's a lot of good stuff. You, see, you even said it that there's a good a lot of good stuff in this presentation. So let's agree that in two weeks we will do follow up call. And basically, we will talk more deeply. What is that? I will send you some pre-reading stuff, whatever, you know, right? In two weeks, we run the call. 
And I was like for two years, suddenly no name. I was a chief of that whole, you know, group. It was called Executive Council for Emerging Markets, you know, right? So basically, yeah, we recovered. It was a mistake. I underestimated that we should, you know, talk to them before. But we uh, recovered pretty nicely from, from such, you know, mistake. Yeah. This is amazing because one of the points here in my notes, Jan, is that I want to make sure that people know if I make a mistake, don't just panic. Don't just apologize. The same goes, by the way, for making a, quote, wrong decision. So sometimes we make a decision at work with the best intent with the information we have, and then we get new information. And it turns out it was not the right decision. But here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to lose any sleep at night because whatever decision you've made, whatever action you've taken, it's happened. You accept yeah. it and you now make the best of it and you make it still a good outcome for yourself. And the winners, the people who are successful have that mindset. Jan didn't say, oh, I made a mistake. I need them to forgive me. How can I plead to them? He said, no, okay, got it, learned it. We'll, not, we'll now do the Japanese nemawashi from now on where I get people involved. But now I'm still going to follow up in two weeks. I'm going to get them the information. I'm going to help them to understand. And I'm going to convince them it's still the right thing. So in the end, it was a, quote, mistake. But who cares? He stayed focused in making sure this happened. So don't worry so much about is it the perfect decision? Is it the best decision? Is it the right decision? Even if it's, quote, wrong or you make a mistake, take that and keep running. <laughs> You'll start to see mistakes aren't that big a deal. They're not showstoppers. There, there is a one thing, you know, somebody asked me recently, there was like 800 people from real estate last week here in Prague. And somebody asked me a quite smart question. How to give your boss feedback that he or she is making mistakes? Okay. And that's tough, you know, right? And I think, for example, what I was doing with John Philippe or even with Gates, it was it's it's never like that it's totally wrong, right? There's something you know good. I was always like going and saying you start basically it, you you need to make sure that the other person amygdala, the other person monkey is taken care of. Okay. <laughs> That's why you need to start positive, like you know, sandwich feedback the same way. So I would say, hey. This is a you know good idea to go in you know such direction. I think it's a great you know direction. How about if we would add that and that? You know what I mean, right? And that and that and that and then he or she feels like okay, that is still my idea and it's even getting better. So it's good, you know, right? We are like team, and and this is it because very I mean especially on those high levels, very rarely. It would be totally wrong what the, what the, what the people are doing. Yeah. But there are some you know good things. Uh, give you one uh, example, okay? Bill Gates never wanted to do so-called Microsoft Office Lite. I explain what Office Microsoft Office Lite means. That meant only to translate you know software and some help file and not doing any manuals whatever because that was very costly, you know, right? And Bill said we should do the whole localization. I said. But Bill, that's a great idea. But how about those, you know, markets where there's a high piracy? We will not sell that many, you know, copies at the beginning. We'll, we'll sell like to the government a couple of businesses. So we need to have something, and it's better to have office light or whatever we we call it, you know, right? Then you know nothing. And then I was really able, like after two sessions, to persuade him and persuade also. Uh, the, the product managers in Microsoft Corporation, because very often those people, they look, okay, we go like, if it's working in the U.S., it's working everywhere. Come on, you know, right? <laughs> it does not, you know, right? Just... You need to localize that software and, and, and those markets are, you know, different, whatever, you know, right? Uh, right? I, I spent like half of the year, there was a fight between Greece and Macedonia about the name, okay? Because Macedonia... You know, the name which was recognized by United Nations was former Yugoslavian Republic of Macedonia, FIROM, right? And Macedonian government was pushing us to put on the box Macedonia, right? Macedon you know what I mean, right? Yeah. And I was like in between I, and Bill Gates was saying, well, what, what is the issue? I said, the issue is that it's only your country which recognized the name Macedonia. Everybody else talking about FIROM, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
but then now it's so because I think they 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 call they, they call it North Macedonia exactly and, and they, yeah somehow it's it's taken care of now you know but so, only recently only recently is it yeah called but North you know what, what I'm saying I was in the software business and I've got a lot of geopolitical issues like that and yeah. it's for those people in Microsoft Corporation it was hard you know to uh, to to like figure out what what to do right so you yeah. you. you you really need to, need to be flexible and 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 also like a little bit diplomatic. But you know, we are learning by mistakes, and those organizations that are like encouraging new mistakes and learning from that, I think they are very much you know ahead of the others. So. I agree. And you got to share a mistake of yours, so maybe I'll yeah. share. Uh, I have many, but okay. just fairly recently I, um, I I I say this specifically because it's a very silly one I went to my dermatologist and she said hey I have a new facial that I could do for you and I said I'm a very why not person I'm like sounds good I asked zero questions <laughs> and she put it on and it was actually a very strong chemical peel and so two days later I'm presenting in front of a, you know quite a large audience okay and my face is actually peeling off the skin of my face this is supposed to happen i called her didn't know is peeling off now how can you stand up and say i'm very confident i know exactly what i'm talking about i was teaching executive presence and my face is peeling off it's red it's itching it's flaking it's all yeah, over yeah, right yeah. and what did i do of course i stood up i made a, an initial joke about it I, we talked about how to make mistakes right we went through it and i said to them if it bothers anyone let me know right and i'm making light of it and sure. all i did for myself first of all in the moment i addressed it and diffused it and then for myself i said okay don't freak out don't pat i can't do anything about it right i can't put my face back on so i thought to myself let's get some perspective first of all is this going to change the content of what i deliver no in 10 years is this going to fundamentally matter have changed my career or changed my life in any way will i even care about this no and by the way is this a funny story i took some pictures is this a funny story that i'm going to tell at a dinner party so i you know i have some funny things going on and that's life yes okay so that I want people to know, I, I again, I specifically picked a silly mistake because most of the mistakes we make are small and it's easy to self-blame. Oh my God, why did I do that? Why didn't I ask questions? Why didn't I, right? I could go down that tunnel, but who does it help? So instead we joke, we make fun, we get perspective and we move forward in the best way possible. And after I made that joke, look, nobody else cared. Some people came up at lunch and said, hey, it was no big deal for them. And you know, funny that we had that, we had a good laugh and that was it. So don't make mistakes or failures or things that you've done, don't make it more than it needs to be. So many people, when they make a mistake, they love to self-blame. Oh my God, why didn't I? I'm so stupid. Oh, no, other people would have been smarter than that. They wouldn't have done that. Please stop yourself from the spiral. It doesn't help anything. Stand in your power. Okay, what can I do now? Accept and move forward. Yeah, that is uh, something for me. Uh, never listen to anybody who would not go to ask for an advice was a mistake I did many times and it affected deeply my life. Well, not anymore since the time I become a rebel for these people. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about you yet. When I coach leaders, one of the very first things that I often need to coach, they are, you know, to be strong, powerful, to get to your leadership position, you often have to show you're right and stand up for what you're right and persuade, mm -hmm. I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. And that is a great skill set. I don't want anybody to lose that skill set. I train that skill set. And there's another part where you should be passionate about being right, but not blind because you need to be right. You should be open and curious. This is why Richard Branson was so great at all his different virgin companies, because he would go in and not go, I'm the CEO and you should do this and you should do this. He would come into his offices and go, ah, Tell me more about that. Hmm, how did that happen? What about this? And he just was curious. He was thinking, right? He was open. So you should have opinions. You should stand for what you believe, but you should not be so ingrained in I am right 
that you're closed to other stuff. And that's where people's blind spots bring them down. Yeah. That's that's what I think what Michal is saying here. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Anybody uh, anybody else with uh, some, you know, myths in some <laughs> Yeah, nobody wants to share their mistakes. You can go back in our YouTube channel. We had a, a video where we talked all about our, our major uh, fuck ups. Oh, that's <laughs> it was right. quite yeah. a fun one. Exactly. There is really, a, uh, by the way, uh, there is a real movement. It started in the US, now it's in Europe. It's called, I mean, I supported it in Europe a couple of years ago. It's called Fuck Up Nights. You are allowed, it's like TED Talks, but you are only you are only allowed to talk about your fuck ups like for mm -hmm. 20 minutes, you know, and it's what you learn. It's there's basically the scheme, you know, uh what what you should uh, talk about. Right. Yes. But uh, yeah, what, what we've done in Microsoft, there was something called post-mortem feedback. Not that anybody would, you know, die, but it was like after some deals or after some big events, we would sit together and basically ask what we should continue what we should stop what we should start like what was going you know well what we learn what were kind of the mistakes and and and, and so on you know right uh, because you know if if you have event like with twenty thousand people chances are is it twenty thousand people four nights okay chances are that you know some people would get, you know, drunken so much that they would be put in the jail for, you know, one night or whatever. Really, sometimes it happened, you know, right? And and then obviously, what we what should we learn? Should we not have alcohol at the parties? No, that would be, you know, bad. Right? We should we should rather educate, you know, people. I think there is a from Wojciech something very long. My mistake, sure. So I will read it. Oh, I, thank you. I have introduced to board member a document which was not previously aligned with two departments with his responsibility. Both departments raised their hands towards it. The truth is that they didn't want to do it. Of course, the board members supported them. Why? That is not good to introduce something which is not aligned. Yeah. I reply, yes, it's true, and I will handle with it until the next time. Why? Well, by the way, the next time the department stand with me and introduce the same thing yeah the, the, this is it this this the very often the issue is that we are not you know including the other stakeholders it's called yeah. stakeholders right and and i i learn also tough sometimes you know right so and you know now i rather really if, if i you know talk to somebody or want to solve something i rather talk to the people up front and so it, it is it is, you know, clean for everybody. So we have a common level of understanding. So, Mika, uh, and at the same time, I never tell people you would go to ask the advice to F of when they give you advice. It's not so comfortable of your ego. It was even bigger mistake. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, uh, you need to put your ego behind you, you know, right? Because some some feedback is very tough, but it can help you. To me, uh, look, I very often i'm looking what is the source of that criticism of the feedback whatever if it's really somebody you know good right and somebody who really can understand it then i you know read it and i take it to the, my heart but very people who really achieve something in their life they are able to give you feedback in the proper way so you are it's like polite you can still learn you know usually there are feedback is coming from the people who never achieve anything, you know, right? I mean, yesterday I was criticized by some lady that, you know, the T-shirt the I was having, it's basically pajama and it's not true, you know, right? And and I think, and, and she was like, this is not proper, you know, T-shirt, okay, because it's pajama. And I think it's not proper behavior what she showed me, you know, right? Because she, she put it like, you know... Uh, on the like open you know uh space basically right and, but i i simply don't care to be really honest i could have a nice you know jacket here right but why <laughs> but that's not you right so this i, love I don't this need it I, come on i i will have like i have a uh, on wednesday i will because i'm coaching the ceo of uh, s10 they are you know sponsoring the tournament in vienna so I will have a jacket because he will have a jacket and other, you know, because there will be board members. But 
today, why should have? I was teaching the whole day kids, you know, like seven, ten years old. So I should have. <laughs> but 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 this is the thing, and this goes to what Mika's saying, which is you want to make sure that when you're listening to advice. It's advice from people who you respect, who you admire, who you would want to be with. Random advice from people and opinions that just serves to add no value to your life. You were conscious enough to say, this is the shirt I want to wear. By the way, as an American, I feel like after COVID, people wear literally their pajamas to like Broadway. And I'm, I don't mean what? yoga pants. I mean, actual yeah. plaid the, 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 this is like casual. It's almost like developer's business, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was always like whenever I was in the East Coast, on the East Coast, it used to be always like, you know, jacket, tie, you know, proper suit. On the West Coast, in Microsoft, it was like, you know, wow. polo or whatever. You know, when we were with the customers, like, you know, yeah, jacket maybe, but no tie, you know. It really yeah, right. you do what's right for you. Okay, to handle this one, you know. Okay, you know, hi, it's me again. What should <laughs> be my self-talk when I mess up with work in school? Here's an example. I want to catch up with my homework, but my teacher doesn't believe in me. My God, how many of us have had someone who should have believed in us? Could have been a parent, could have been a teacher, could have been a boss. And instead of saying, you've got this, you can, I'm here to support. They said, ah, I don't believe in you. You're never gonna. You have to make this choice now. Is that the voice that you want to let in for your self-talk? This is a very conscious choice. It's easy to let it in and to beat yourself up and to spiral. But if you want to be strong, if you want to be powerful, yeah. you can take the message. Okay, there's a, they're saying that they don't believe in me. Why is that? Oh, because they never see me studying and they think, uh, you know, it takes a lot of studying. Okay, well, I can study more or I can show them that I'm studying if I want to. But I do it because of what I believe in, not because of how they're saying things should yeah. be. And not because I'm letting, I'm going, oh, I have to prove something to them. That's giving away your power to the teacher. Yeah. What I would say, you know, your internal dialogue is very much influenced by, you know, the angle you are looking into the things. Because, you know, whatever is happening in your life, it makes no meaning before your brain will, you know, put some sticker on it, you know, right? So you may see some situations is like disaster, but if you will train your brain, because it, there is a saying, change your view of the world and the world will change, you know, because yes. everybody, it's called paradigm. We have, and, and the, the change is called paradigm shift, you know, right? We have like, you, you know, we, we have some view, okay, of the things. And if we will, you know, change it, then, you know, the world, the world, our you know perception will will change, and it it yes. will help us. Okay, and why should we have like negative views of ourselves? You know, right? I I mean, I'm making like I give you one story. It's a good story for the end. Okay. Yes. My wife, she is a great wife, but she is choleric. Okay, so she's very often like you know getting that you know, uh, she. The, she she got very active amygdala, especially in the morning. Uh, okay, especially. In the <laughs> I can relate. She's, like, she's like cooling down, and she's like, fine. Now, what happened? A couple of weeks ago, I took you know her key from the gate. So she was able. It's possible to push it like physically, but it's a lot of win and war, whatever. So I was calling. I said sorry. Take a taxi, you know, because the other car will, you know, you will not be able to do it because it's a complicated whatever. She said, not only you take the key from the gate, you take the key from my car. I don't, I cannot open my car. Okay. I said, sorry, take a taxi. Fine. Okay. She, she is calling like in five minutes. She said, I found a replacement key for my car. And I said, can you tell me why are you calling me again? because the issue seems to be solved. And she said, because you are stupid. And she hang on. Okay. So this, <laughs> like that's, that's the difference between rationality and like emotions, you know, right? That's, I made something, she said, because you are stupid. Boom. <laughs> that was it. <laughs>
We gotta have and her as a guest on the show, a, by the way. That's a corrective feedback in oh. a, say, you know, very open way. <laughs> well, I think her feedback was, I want you to care and be concerned, and you don't seem to care enough. So I'm gonna do as much as I can to get your attention to care. But, yeah, but I was absolutely okay, you know. I was teaching, you know, and you'll be fine. Hey, listen, yeah, on this last note, which is uh -huh. ties back to um by um what you've written here i would say this is a book called the seven rules of power and the very first it's by a stanford professor jeffrey pfeffer and the very first rule is get out of your own way and the whole point of the chapter is there's a you know at the beginning there's a woman christine and she says oh i'm not i'm not getting ahead in this uh, in my career and he says, why not? And she said, well, I'm the youngest and I'm the newest to the organization. I'm a female and a male dominated thing. She went through all these things about herself that just weren't quite good enough. And he said, OK, and what are some things that are great about you? Well, I'm the only one with a Stanford education. I have provided the best results over the last year. I this and this. And he said, OK, you've got lists, three things that describe you. I'm not long enough with the company. I'm too young. I'm, the, I'm yeah. you know, or I'm well educated. I bring results. Which Absolutely. ones do you want to believe? Yeah. And which ones help you to show up powerfully, show up in the way that you want, get to where you want to go, and you don't need the others. That's it. That's how we change our self-talk. I know we're over time, but I will tell you from personal experience, it works every single person. When I said, I'm going to become an executive coach in Switzerland, they said, that's cute. No, you're not. And they gave me all the reasons that I wasn't going to. You don't speak yeah, the absolutely. language. You're a female. You, you don't have, a, you're not a gray haired male is what I heard multiple times. That's uh, what I, I have it. You know, I have you it. have it. You're, you're <laughs> ready. You can be an executive coach. But I, I, don't, I don't speak proper German either, you know, so. <laughs> but I listened and I said, okay, I could quit. And I could say yeah. no. Or I said, okay, I don't speak German. True. I'm a native English speaker. That's more rare than a German speaker in Switzerland. True, absolutely, yeah. So and why don't I use that speaks, to my advantage? Everybody speaks English. And everybody everybody speaks, speaks English, but, you know, you, you take it, but you don't have to take it in as yeah. though it's a truth. And that's what I want people to realize. Make mistakes, move forward quickly. Don't let a spiral stop you. Reflect, learn, and keep exactly. going. You know, first of all, you need to believe in yourself, you, and then others will start to believe in the same way. You know, if you yes. don't believe yourself, you cannot, you know, ask other people to believe in, in you. This is it. Whatever you will do, is whether that's it's it. sports, science, you know, business art it doesn't matter you need to believe in you what what you do and obviously that's there are many you know uh videos here on youtube we, we did with lisa about you know talents and self-awareness and so on because the people who mostly believe in themselves are those who really understand who they are and they understand who they are not you know right exactly very good okay so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much dear friends thank and uh thank yeah you. See, you, see you soon again and we we'll see you soon we will put it on uh, YouTube and other, you know, channels. Okay. Yes. So Have a good one. Take care. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.